Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is Jam Man Time and today I have another video on two rare World War One era experimental German submachine guns that were designed towards the very end of that conflict. And these two submachine guns were designed by a slightly lesser known German firearms designer by the name of Fritz Walter between 1917 and 1918. And these two submachine guns are known as the Walter Model 1918-1 and the Walter Model 1918-2. And these were two experimental submachine guns that actually competed against the Bergman MP18 submachine gun along with a bunch of other lesser known and in some cases even lost German submachine gun projects of the First World War. Now, Fritz Walter was a lesser known firearms designer who sometimes collaborated with Georgi Luger, the designer of the Luger pistol and the Luger experimental rifles of the pre-World War I era and the Luger experimental rifles of the First World War. In 1918, Fritz Walter had actually helped Luger design a very advanced Otago action shotgun that was based on the Luger pistol, but this was a semi-automatic shotgun, and I actually mentioned that weapon back in 2017 when I did a video on advanced weapons of World War One. But what many arms researchers don't know is that he also designed two submachine gun projects between 1917 and 1918. When I actually came across these totally by accident, one on a website called Firearms 96 and a user on the Forgotten Weapons Forum by the name of Max Poppenaker also mentioned these weapons. So I started tracking them down. Luckily, Firearms 96 already had the second version of the Walter submachine gun on his website. All I had to do now was find the first version of the Walter machine pistol. Now, these two machine pistols are pretty strange. Unlike the MP18, which was fed by a Luger P08 Trummel magazine, these two were fed by a can-shaped helical magazine that resembled a cross between a Lewis Pan magazine or even the American 180 submachine gun, except the magazine is on the underside, underside of the weapon, instead of on top, as you would see in the Lewis gun, or the American 180 submachine guns of the more modern era. Uh, of the more modern era. The magazine capacity of this weapon is largely unknown, but I would assume it would be somewhere between 32 and 75 rounds at the most. You know, 50 in the midway. The magazine capacity of this weapon is largely unknown. Both of these weapons used a similar magazine that was a vertical pan magazine that held at least a 30 to 50 rounds or 75 rounds at the maximum. Now I came across this first version of the Walter machine pistol totally by accident while on a random Russian forum called Gun Pop Roo or Pop Gun Roo. And I found a 2008 Ukrainian magazine article that was actually written on Fritz Walter and it actually went over some of his weapons projects. And luckily this magazine article had a list of weapons projects that were worked on by Walter Fritz during the First World War, including some rare images of the various pistol shotguns and machine pistols that he had worked on and had submitted to the Aus Reibung project of 1918. The Aus Reibung project was actually the name of the German submachine gun project developed by the German army in an attempt to get as many German arms developers to come up with a machine pistol prototype or at least a workable machine pistol concept that could be adopted by the German army at least by 1917-1918. Walter Fritz actually submitted two submachine gun designs during that one and a half year time period between 1917 and 1918. And these were the two submachine gun projects he submitted. And if I had to choose, I actually like the Walter Model 1 more than the Walter Model 2 because of how unique it looks. It looks like the cross between a MP18 and a Gewehr 98 bolt action rifle. There were other submachine gun projects that were basically just Gewehr 98 bolt action rifles converted into submachine guns. Now, the Walter machine pistols weren't fully patented until after World War I, around 1919-1920, and that's where a lot of these the photographs were actually taken. 
The weapons themselves were tested during the First World War, but were not actually patented until after World War I, around 1919-1920. So these are two of the rarest machine pistols to be lost to history. Now, there are only photographs of these weapons that survive. The actual prototypes themselves are mostly still lost, and I'm pretty sure someone will find them someday. But until now, these are two of the rarest the German submachine gun projects from World War I, and at least they survive in a photographic form. And these are not the only submachine gun projects. There are still several other German World War I submachine guns from the Aus Reibung project. That includes the Hoffmann machine pistol, the Dreiss machine pistol from 1918, which was separate from the 1919 version. There's also a DWM Mauser submachine gun and a regular Mauser submachine gun prototype. And there's also one I saw on Firearm96's blog or website called the Simpson submachine gun, which itself was just another carbine converted into a submachine gun. And those are just the ones that were listed. There are probably other submachine gun projects from Germany from the First World War that are simply lost to history, both physically and in terms of the information that was archived from the Great War. So there you have it. These were two rare submachine gun projects by Fritz Walter, and these are some of the rare submachine gun projects of the First World War. So what do you think of these two weapons, the Walter Model 1 and 2? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.